A plea agreement between federal prosecutors and Hunter Biden fell apart yesterday after a judge did not sign off on the deal. This unexpected twist in the case led to a public display of tensions between prosecutors and Biden's attorneys. CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge has more. Catherine, good morning. Good morning. I was sitting about 20 feet behind the president's son in the courtroom yesterday, and as the deal started to fall apart, he appeared increasingly upset. Hunter Biden left the federal courthouse in Wilmington after the plea agreement reached with prosecutors last month collapsed. The president's son was expected to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and was expected to enter a diversion program to resolve a third charge for felony gun possession. But Trump appointed judge Mary Ellen Norica's questions about the scope and structure of the agreement ultimately led to it unraveling. Plea agreements uh, fall apart every day in federal court, but they don't fall apart in high profile cases like this based on such fundamental misunderstandings. The critical disagreement between U.S. Attorney David Weiss, a Trump appointee, and Hunter Biden's legal team is over whether the plea would close the door on future charges for other possible crimes. Weiss has said consistently the probe is ongoing. Judge Norica said she felt she was being asked to rubber stamp an agreement she had concerns about and questioned if the resolution to the gun charge was even constitutional. Hunter Biden is a private citizen, and this was a personal matter for him. The White House reiterated the president's support for his son, but stressed the independence of the Justice Department. Republicans have criticized the plea agreement, calling it a sweetheart deal. There shouldn't be two justice systems in America, and hopefully today that's what's being done. Hunter Biden left the federal courthouse behind me without commenting for reporters. He's entered a plea of not guilty for now. A plea deal is still possible. The parties have 30 days to answer the judge's questions before she makes a decision. Anne-Marie. All right, Catherine, thank you very much. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. All right, let's talk about what went down. So two things happened in the courtroom yesterday, Ricky. It seemed like uh, uh, Hunter Biden's attorneys and prosecutors did not really clarify what this plea deal entailed. And so there seemed to be a dis disagreement about whether or not it would protect Hunter in the future from uh, prosecution for certain things. But the X factor was the judge, and she raised some concerns. Can you explain that? Well, the judge took her time and read not only the plea agreement, but read this pretrial diversion agreement, which had to do with the gun charge. That is, if Hunter Biden remained, in essence, clean for two years, he didn't use drugs, he didn't use alcohol, uh, he didn't get into any further difficulty, that at the end of the two years, the case would just go away. Pretrial diversion agreements in lesser crimes are very, very common in the state court system, but not very common in the federal system, usually because there aren't those kinds of little crimes in the federal system. What happened was the judge saw that if, in fact, there might have been a violation during those two years, she was going to be the decider. She was going to decide whether or not to prosecute. That's not her job. She's a judge. So it was what we call a separation of powers problem, and she saw it. The problem is the decision about whether or not someone has gone forward correctly with pretrial detention and a decision about whether or not to prosecute is clearly in the prosecutor's realm, not in the judge's realm. So that's what caught her attention. But when she started to question about that procedural matter, it became abundantly clear between the two sides that there was no agreement about the state of immunity mm. for, for crimes that had happened in the past. Certainly, the defense believed that when it came into court, it was going to have a situation where Hunter Biden could enter two pleas of guilty to tax failure to file misdemeanors, and that was going to absolve him of any other potential crimes in the past, or else why would he enter the deal? The prosecution, who has said from the beginning, 
we're still investigating. This is not over. Well, they certainly didn't believe that the immunity clause in pretrial diversion covered all crimes. And when you read this paragraph, which I got to do last night and this morning when it was finally found uh, by Politico letting it out, we saw that the language is highly ambiguous. So you can understand why each side thought they were right. Very interesting. So now the parties have 14 days to brief the judge and a ruling could be delayed. I mean, what sort of timeline can we expect here? When could we expect a ruling? Well, what's really happened is the parties are the people who said they could get this done in 14 days. The judge has really given them more time, closer to a month. Um, but what will happen is, I believe, that the parties are going to get together and try to work out a new deal. Mm. It's in nobody's interest to take this case to trial. Government doesn't want to try it because you're dealing with Hunter Biden, who's from the Biden family, the favorite sons of Delaware. You're dealing with a defendant who has a real defense having to do with his drug addiction. He mm. was a horrendous drug addict. We know at some point he was doing crack cocaine something like every 15 minutes. So. He he was at a point where he was not really adhering to any responsibilities, and he might be a real sympathetic defendant. Hmm. The prosecution doesn't want to try him, but the defense really doesn't want to go to trial or leave the issue open as to whether or not he might be prosecuted for future crimes. Because what we have to remember, Anne-Marie, is that there's an election in 2024. Mm -hmm. There may be a Republican president, whether it's Donald Trump or someone else. And in that case, you have a new Department of Justice. And what they are afraid of, the defense is afraid of, is if you have a new prosecutor at some later point in time, that they're going to reach back and try to charge Hunter Biden with past crimes having to do with foreign lobbying. Mm -hmm. So the defense has a huge interest in getting this done. If I were betting, and of course I could be wrong, but if I were betting, sometime within the next four to six weeks, they will somehow work out a deal. All right, Ricky, uh, I look forward to see if your bet pans out. Thank you.